Over the course of the last year, this channel has debunked a lot of pseudoscience such as astrology, vastu, homeopathy to name a few. Now I will start to concentrate on yet another form of pseudoscientific treatment, one which is very much prevalent in our country. In fact, some even claim it is developed in our country and one which is steeped in our culture and tradition. One that brings in a lot of tourists for its medicinal properties but doesn't get to tour outside the country as medicine but as food supplement and one which is touted as harmless yet is very dangerous. It's time to discuss naturopathy, herbal medicines and Ayurveda. I know I'm going to get a lot of stick for these but hey ho when you're presenting things with evidence with tests and researchers backing me up a few ad hominem remarks are not going to ruffle my feathers. The intention of this channel is to study the truths behind pseudoscience and misconceptions prevalent in our society and place the actual scientific facts before you with peer-reviewed studies and factual evidence. Hello and welcome to the 90th video by Pale Blue Thoughts. I will start with naturopathy. Naturopathy or naturopathic medicine is a form of alternative medicine that employs an array of pseudoscientific practices branded as natural, non-invasive or promoting self-healing. The six principles of naturopathy are these. The ideology and methods of naturopathy are based on vitalism and folk medicine rather than evidence-based. Although some practitioners may use techniques supported by science-based medicine. Naturopathic practitioners commonly are found to be standing against modern medical practices such as antibiotics, vaccinations and surgery. Instead, naturopathic practice relies on unscientific notions often leading them to false diagnosis and treatments that do not work. It outrightly rejects medicinal drugs and the use of surgery. Instead, it relies itself on so-called natural treatments. It tries to emphasize on prevention of a disease but bases it on the philosophically and scientifically rejected vitalism principle. They claim that they are scientific with a science of their own which is required to prove their reliability but are widely inconsistent with currently accepted modern science-based medicine. They do sometimes give some good advice about nutrition and exercise but their core principles are swimming in the sea of quackery. Science-based medicine, on the other hand, follows one standard of practice and that is on the best available evidence. Naturopathy or herbal medicine promoters, on the other hand, just do what they think is right or follow what is written in their holy books. If you went to five naturopaths, you may end up getting five diagnoses and five different treatments. There is no standardization. The most common naturopathic medicines prescribed in India are Siddha and Yunani. Ayurveda tends to sit separately even though some of the practices may overlap. Naturopathy sometimes comes in the guise of Prakritik Chikitsa or Prakriti Chikitsa. We have already exposed a main supporter of the same in one of our earlier episodes, Mohan and Nair. As mentioned in that episode, the underlying principle of these naturopathic medicine system are still treating the four humors, something that allopathy of yesteryears did before it shifts towards science. The four humors include blood, yellow bile, black bile and phlegm. It was thought that all diseases are caused due to an imbalance of these four bodily fluids. Today we know that it is not so and yet naturopaths still cling to something which can be proved to be just historic curiosity. Also, the most important thing to note is that none of the treatments have been tested before given to patients. Instead, they are labeled as safe, natural and with no side effects. Well, if you don't test for side effects, then isn't it obvious that you won't have any information about side effects? 
I have touched upon this topic in one of my previous videos titled natural versus chemical. Just because it comes from a plant doesn't mean it is good. Plants don't make medicines for humans. They make a lot of dangerous chemicals which help ward off insects and their predators, the herbivorous animals. Since they don't have the ability to get up and run like other animals, they have evolved many alkaloids which are poisonous to us. A plant is likely to contain thousands of such alkaloids which can cause harm to our bodies. Not to mention the presence of heavy metals in groundwater. These get pulled in by the plants and remains within them. Now when you take these plants as medicines in high doses, these heavy metals reach your body. Then the body tries to remove it and it is often unsuccessful. Finally, over a long period of time, the liver, the organ responsible for cleansing the body of such toxic materials, gives up and you end up getting a liver disease. Many of the so-called natural elements found within plants are hepatotoxic, meaning it is toxic for the liver. Now let us see some of the basic principles of naturopathy to see why they are unscientific. The first principle is first do no harm which is basically what all medical systems follow since the early Greeks. But naturopaths interpret this as do not give a patient medicine because medicines have side effects. You may have heard many naturopaths and their followers staunchly believing in this. But this is not what the statement really means at all. The line simply means that do not give any medicine that can do more harm than good. That is what they do in modern medicine. They look at the risk-benefit ratio and only give a treatment when the benefits outweigh the risks. All side effects are carefully studied and noted down and is also made available to the public. The crucial difference between evidence-based medicine and naturopathy is that in evidence-based medicine, the side effects are identified and studied, whereas in the pseudoscience, they just don't bother. Have you ever met a naturopath who does researches on medicinal plants? You wouldn't. These secrets are handed down generation to generation without anyone bothering to check the actual ingredients or if any of the active ingredient would cause any harm. The medicines have never been proven to work and they are not tested for their safety. Some of the substances that they use have been found to cause harm without providing any benefit. I intend to do a separate video on those so please watch out for that. To me, first do no harm means don't use untested treatments and medicines which have not been tested for their safety because without testing you wouldn't know whether they do more harm than good. Another thing that most naturopathic healers keep parroting is to treat them as teachers or sages. Of course, we all know that. doctors through their training get expert knowledge which they keep giving to patients. In fact, the word doctor itself comes from the Latin word which means teacher. Naturopaths instead teach patients things which are not true. An excellent case is Mohan Nair again who taught his patients that cancer was not a disease but a belief of the brain. They teach that certain methods have been proven effective when they haven't. The third thing is that they keep saying is that their treatment is based on prevention rather than cure. Of course, any doctor would like to prevent a disease than treat it. So they give expert advice on regular screening tests or checkups, vaccines, dietary controls, exercises, etc. Does a regular checkup form part of their regime? No. In fact, Many people may remember the propaganda that Mohan Nair had let out against vaccines and scanning systems. And he was against the vaccine until the virus, which he said was an invention of the medicine mafia, chose to end his life. Now let us come to the main mantra of naturopathy, the healing power of nature. Their belief is that the treatments don't heal, but the body heals itself. As I mentioned earlier, their base itself is wrong as they believe it is the imbalance of the humors that cause disease. Ask any naturopath the question, how does their medicine work or act on a human body and you will never get a satisfying answer, ever. 
they will run around the bushes trying to explain the vitalist principle and the experience of hundreds of years of treatments and the wisdom of the yogis while conveniently skipping to answer the question. They would have nothing but anecdotal experience to tell you and no peer-reviewed papers or publications in scientific journals. In short, nothing to claim that their method is scientific. Of course, you might also get labelled as part of the medicine mafia for asking that question. Ask me. Let us see how science-based medicine approaches this. Let us take the case of pneumonia for instance. Antibiotics are given not to heal the lungs. They are given to kill the bacteria which causes the infection in the lungs so that the lungs can heal themselves. Yet another false statement that the naturopaths make is that modern medicine treats only the symptoms and not the underlying cause. This is a wild fox accusation that we hear all the time from all pseudoscientific system practitioners. Let us take COVID for instance. Yes, before the vaccine arrived, modern medicine was treating the symptoms. That is because they knew that this was a virus and the only treatment for a viral disease is using an efficient vaccine. But what do the naturopaths treat? Their books don't have any mention of a virus because they weren't discovered at the time of writing these books. In fact, they deny the existence of the virus like our late Mohan and Nair. Also, have you heard of any doctor just giving painkillers for appendicitis or cough syrup for pneumonia? No. If they find out that the cause of a disease is an inflammation of the appendix, they either try to reduce the inflammation or remove the organ itself. Naturopaths fool themselves by saying they are treating underlying causes when they are only treating symptoms. If a patient came with a fever and stomach pain, how would any naturopaths find out if it was due to food poisoning or due to some disease of the lungs or kidney or if they have cancer? What diagnostic or scanning techniques are there apart from looking at the eyes, tongue and feeling the pulse or feeling around the stomach of the patient with them? All they can analyze are the external appearances and so they treat the symptoms and most of the times there is a remission due to placebo effect. But if the actual cause is due to a more serious disease, most often the patient won't go back to the naturopath or seek modern medicine or in worse cases die. So the naturopath might never know what happened to the patient after the treatment. Moreover. How would they know if the treatment would work? What is the mechanism of action? Has that been mentioned in their textbooks? The answer is a big no. In fact, if you look at the principles of pseudoscientific medicine systems, you can see that their basic rule is that all diseases are caused due to an imbalance of vital force, an imbalance of chi, or imbalance of four humors, or the imbalance of tridoshas one underlying cause. If they claim that all diseases are caused due to an imbalance of vital force or chi or whatever, don't they also have to mention how their medicine treat the imbalance? Alas, that vital information is not mentioned in the books because an evidence-based approach is not their cup of tea. Modern medicine, on the other hand, identifies at least nine causes of disease under the acronym Vindicate plus a tenth one under traumatic injury. Also, naturopathy claims to be all natural. I have said this before. There is nothing called as natural in this universe. Everything exists as chemicals in one form or the other. So what are the chief problems that I see with naturopathy? One. They use unproven treatments and they pretend they have the proof. Most of the treatment methods are nothing short of fantasies and weird imagination. You don't believe me? Wait till I reach to Ayurveda. They disregard what modern science has found out and they rely only on anecdotes. Their medicines and treatment methods have remained unchanged for centuries now, whereas the world and pathogens and our understanding of them have changed drastically. Updating, as you know, is not one of the features of any pseudoscience. They try all combinations of their medicines without any rationale. 
If a patient gets worse off because of their treatment, they usually send them to a modern medicine hospital as they don't have the experience to handle these situations. They don't have the knowledge or experience or education about handling emergencies. They seem to think that if they can prove modern medicine doctors as bad, that proves their system of medicine. Hogwash. For their medicine to be accepted as science, they need to bring in their evidence based on the scientific medicine. Plain doctor bashing won't prove their methods. In fact, it is a logical fallacy called the two coquake fallacy. They claim that modern medicines have side effects. Yes, and I have said this before too. Anything that has an effect will have a side effect. And if you claim to have no side effects, well, you know what I'm saying. And lastly, the most important point of them all. They don't test their medicines either for efficacy or safety. So you are at the mercy of Lady Luck and Sir Placebo. Do I need to say any more? So why do people still opt for these charlatans? Well, the word natural sounds good to most people. They think that the nature is made for them and for them only. They have poor understanding about how the universe functions and most importantly, zero understanding of evolution. Naturopathy offers hope, simple solutions and answers. Unfortunately, there are false hopes, imaginary explanations and wrong answers. They may have had a bad experience with modern medicine or modern medicine doctors. Some of them are scared about the side effects of medicines. We have seen plenty of examples in the last six months where people fear the side effects of the COVID vaccine than the actual disease itself and refuse to take the vaccine. A naturopath tends to spend a lot of time with their patients asking about their family, children, small talk, etc. as they have more time in their hands. This is comforting for a lot of patients. Many are influenced by new age fads and scrupulous marketing gimmicks. For instance, yoga is a new fad that has gripped the world in the last 10 years or so. People are bound to make a beeline for fads just like they do with TikTok videos or reels. Medicine supplements labeled as natural and herbal are yet another fad that is just as rubbish and have no real benefits but come with a lot of unwanted side effects. And many of these treatments cost less. After all, if all you have to do is to take a few spices out of your spice box in your kitchen or some plants from your garden and administer it to people without tests or research, what cost would they incur? Less access to modern medicine facilities and less education, especially in villages, often lead them to these charlatans. If you have travelled along any major roads in North India, for instance, you would not have missed tens advertising these bogus treatments. Even among the educated, there is a serious lack of scientific temper in our society where people would believe anything would cure a disease. And finally, a false sense of pride in our past and history and the indoctrination by our parents and political parties that we had a rich and varied history that we need to go back to. I have said this before, there are things in our history that we can be proud of, accept that. There are things which needs to be modified as per the new world around us, that need to be modified. But there are things that we need to discard as they have been proved to be useless numerous times. They ought to be discarded and naturopathy and its allied systems belong in there. I will stop here for today in the hope that you like this video. This is just a start of a really long series of videos where I would dissect many pseudoscientific medicinal practices including Ayurveda. Yes, you heard that right. But since I am not a medical professional, I will be seeking the help of some experts to guide you towards the right forms of treatment. We are nearing our 100th episode and shouldn't there be some dhamaka for that? Please click subscribe if you want to watch that. Until next time, it's Bye-bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.